Hey there, welcome back. And if this is your first time here, I'm Curtis. I am a consultant, a coach, and I run a community for social entrepreneurs. Super glad to have you here. In this video, we're going to be talking about a really complex subject. And the question that we're going to try to answer is, what is God? And I'm gonna do a lowercase God here, not the uppercase Abrahamic God that maybe you're familiar with, but this lowercase version of God. And so, uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about God, the abstraction. And so if that doesn't make any sense for you, then keep on watching because that means that this video is going to have something that is maybe unfamiliar to you. And I want to preface this video with if you are orthodox or you're really deep in your practice that some of the things in this video might not make sense to you or you might not agree with them. And that's okay. I encourage you to watch this video anyway, and perhaps you'll challenge some beliefs or you'll be able to think about your beliefs in a new way. So we're going to talk about three different types of metaphors to use for God. And so we're gonna talk about God the mountain, God the cave, and God the holarchy. And I'll explain what each of these mean as we go. And I wanna start with God the mountain. For this mountain metaphor of God, I'm gonna pull from an author, David Brooks, who I think has a really nice metaphor. And I, I don't think it's intended to represent God, but I think it's good for this case here. And he has this metaphor of the second mountain. As the metaphor kind of goes, most of us start life on this first mountain. And as we go throughout life, we, we kind of climb this first mountain, and maybe it wraps around here. And as we get to the top of the first mountain, on that top of that first mountain is kind of like everything we want. So let's just put that here. Everything we want is up here. This is, this first mountain is more of a selfish pursuit. It's, you know, maybe we want wealth or status or a nice car, a nice house, but it could also be selfish in the sense that we want safety and security and a big family and lots of friends. It's not necessarily what we might consider bad selfish. It's just things that we want for ourselves. And so I'm going to call this the selfish mountain. And then as the metaphor goes, either we get to the top of this mountain or catastrophe strikes and we're knocked all the way down into this valley of despair. And as the dust settle, we look around and off in the distance, we notice this second mountain, this much bigger mountain. I'm going to throw a little snow cap at the top of this mountain just because that's how I used to draw mountains when I was a kid. Any good big mountain has a snow cap. And so the second mountain, where the first mountain was a selfish pursuit, pursuing the second mountain is more of a selfless pursuit, something that goes beyond self. I think that's a good starting point for understanding God because a lot of these religions talk about God as something that goes beyond ourselves, something bigger than ourselves. We're going to start this metaphor here with um, understanding kind of how different religions talk about God. And so God goes by a lot of names. We have God, the uppercase God. We have Goddess. We have Life, Truth. We have the Logos, the Tao, Brahman. And... Uh, I, I like love, I like the soul of the universe, the soul of the universe. There's a lot of different names that this God in the abstract that we're going to talk about goes by. If I were to kind of describe it in my own words, it's this idea that all these different religions, so God is a Abrahamic version of this idea. The Logos is uh, ancient Greek, Stoics. The Tao is Taoist, Brahmin, Hindu, and some of the Dharmic traditions. And so I like to think of these as different pathways, these different faith systems as different pathways up the same mountain. And so maybe we have kind of Hinduism goes up the mountain and it winds around the mountain and maybe we have Christianity. Let's give it a, a little different color here. We have Christianity maybe goes up the mountain and kind of goes to the top here. Maybe we have Stoicism goes up a little bit. Maybe it comes back down. Maybe it goes up. At the top of the mountain in all of these different faith systems is God. God is the representation of the path that we take to climb this selfless mountain. God is the peak of that mountain. And so that is the mountain metaphor. I like that metaphor because it's kind of a interfaith way of understanding God and it provides us a very simple way to think about it. It's a kind of pathway that a lot of different religions have different names for, but at the top of it is the same concept. And so that is God the mountain. Now we're going to talk about God the cave. I'm going to kind of draw this little anti-mountain here, the opposite of this mountain. And let's give it a little background fill. 
I'll draw a little cave here. So here we have a nice cave. In the first metaphor, we kind of, we went up the mountain. And in this metaphor, we're going to be going into the cave. And so let's find a nice color here. We're gonna be going into this cave. In this version, pulling from kind of the works of Carl Jung and some, somewhat of the Stoics too in the individuation process, this version of God is kind of this idea that deep inside the cave of our subconscious, once we've kind of gotten past these shadows over here, once we've uh, pulled back our persona, and Jung has some concepts of the anima, animus, but once we've really dug, in, dug through the layers of our psyche, core inside of our psyche is this radiant sun, this, this self, and that self and the divine are one. And so this is what we find when we pull back all of the layers, all of the filters, all of the heartache that we have in our heart. Once we kind of get past all of that, we find deep down inside of ourselves, the divine within us. And so that is God, the cave. And I'm going to cross that out. And we're going through pretty quick here. Maybe I'll follow up in another video going into even more detail into these, but that's kind of the version of God, the cave. And I think that's a nice version as well, because that's something that is agnostic of any faith system. And so even as an atheist, you can kind of practice this idea, this uh, psychotherapeutic idea of going deep in yourself and finding, finding what's already there, finding the being and presence inside of you that's already there. You can kind of learn more about that through Stoicism, the yogic, uh, yogi tradition, and some of Carl Jung's work. So those are two versions of God. The other interesting version of God that I'd like to highlight is God the Holarchy. I'm going to draw an atom here. I'm going to give it some electrons. And maybe these electrons kind of have some. Uh, the atom is pulling the electrons in. And then maybe inside of this atom is some neutrons and protons. And that's my representation of an atom. And I'm going to take this atom. Let's move this over here and give ourselves some room. I'm going to take this atom and I'm going to duplicate it out so that we get a bunch of atoms. And these atoms together are going to form the base layer of our holarchy. And so you can kind of think of each of these as, let me just adjust this. You can think of each of these atoms as one distinct holon. The word that's going to describe this is a holon. And so a holon is something that is both a part and a whole. And so when we think of an atom, an atom is one whole atom. That represents one atomic unit. But when we deconstruct an atom, it's composed of parts. We have some electrons here. We have some protons and neutrons here. We have some kind of energy that's pulling them together. There's a lot of different parts that compose an atom. It's not, it's not in isolation. That is a whole on, and we're gonna start there. And I'm going to start with atoms as the base level, as our level one. You can go deeper, but I think this is a good starting point. When we go up a little level, maybe we have some kind of organelles. So maybe we have, I don't know, that could be a ribosome. Maybe we have some lysosomes. Maybe we have mitochondria. And maybe we have another ribosome here. And so we have some organelles, and that's going to be our level two. And what you'll notice is organelles are comprised of atoms. These represent a new level in the holarchy, and each of these are their own holons. Going up a level, uh, so we have organelles and atoms. I'll just write these down as we go, too. So atoms, organelles, and then going up a level, we have, maybe we have some cells. And I'll just draw some cells here. And inside those cells are our organelles and mitochondria and ribosomes and Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, if you remember that. <laughs> I definitely remember that. And so here we have some cells, and that's going to be our level three is cells. And you kind of get the picture here. And I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to go a level up, and maybe we have some humans at the next level. So humans are composed of organelles. And so that's our level four is humans. And I'll do the level five here too. So we have humans. And then maybe another level, we kind of have this collection of humans. I'll give them some bodies here. So we have a grouping of humans and our level five maybe is a society. 
I think you're kind of getting the picture here. We, we can keep going up. You'll notice that this kind of keep going. This keeps going up, and as we go up, there's there's less. So at the bottom level, we have atoms, and atoms kind of comprise everything in our universe, and they're they're a fundamental unit that we use. And sure, there's things below atoms, but thinking about them in the atomic concept, there's they're really the base of everything. And then we have these organelles which form cells, and cells go to form living beings. We kind of created a living hierarchy here. As we go up the hierarchy, there's less and less things. So there's there's way less societies than there are atoms. There's trillions of atoms in the world and maybe a, a handful or a few thousand societies in the world that we know of. And eventually, you might kind of draw this pattern all the way to its end. You get to the top and at the top is this one thing, uh, this thing that kind of encaptures, encapsulates everything below it. And all of these atoms fit into it, all of these organelles, all of these humans, they're all a part of this one thing. And this one thing is God. God is at the top of our hierarchy. It is the thing that is infinite that captures everything. And so one term we might use to describe this is omnipresent because this concept at the top of our hierarchy, which we've just given the label God, you can give it any one of these labels over here, but this thing at the top of our hierarchy encapsulates everything below it in the same way that societies encapsulate humans, humans encapsulate cells, cells encapsulate organelles, and organelles encapsulate atoms. This is also a really cool definition of God because it is also a interfaith definition. It's in this version of God, God is an infinite being that uh, comprises the entire universe that's omnipresent and omnipowerful as well because if you think of um, humans having the power of all the atoms inside of them or the power of all the cells in them and societies having the power of all the humans inside of them, then God has the power of everything in creation inside of it. These are three different versions of God, and we went through, we did the hierarchy version here too, and let's just give that the right color. And I like this understanding of God because it provides us a way to think about it in a non-faith-based way. The, the, these are versions of God that, regardless of whatever faith you are, whether you're Christian or maybe you practice nature or animism, or maybe you're Stoic or Ancient Greek or Taoist or Hindu, or you read the book, The Alchemist, <laughs> then these version, th these uh, metaphors all apply as well. And you might be thinking, if you're someone who's really deep in your faith, that this doesn't really capture uh, your version of God or the infinite or the divine or whatever word you choose over here. And that's totally fair. This isn't going to capture the specifics of your version of God. This is God in the abstract. I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you a new way to think about God. And I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on whether this resonated, whether you completely disagree with this and you think this is totally stupid. Whatever you feel, please feel free to share it in the comment section and we'll have a discussion about it. If we want to change the metaphors that we use, I'll, I can always record a follow-up video for that. So thanks so much for taking the time and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.